Formula V, the most popular form of motor racing in Ireland. Why? Well, for a start off, course. Paul, you've been racing these cars for about 18 years now. That's right. And uh, a lot of standard components here. A lot of standard components. The front axle is off a Volkswagen Beetle. The disc brakes are off a Fiat Uno. Uh, the wheels we got made for a Formula 4 tyre, 13 inch wheels. Again, the tyre is cheap and it lasts quite a while. And then as we move forward, of course, there's space frame cars and they're all made in Ireland. Uh, this car is a, a Shane, made by David Shane in Wicklow. There's another car called a Leystone, made by Paul Heavey, a few miles from Mondello. And then we're moving to the back. Uh, again, very standard components. We've got, uh, obviously, a Volkswagen engine, but what form? It's again a Beetle engine, it's a 1600cc air-cooled Beetle engine. It's a real economy pack and of course brilliant racing as we know. Gentlemen, what a year this, this team has been having in the championship, first and second. Yeah, we had a good year of plum, um, there's seven rounds gone and we've won six of them between us. Can nobody top you in this championship? Oh, they can. This man's running me very hard now this year. Very hard. He's a very hard man to beat, hasn't he? He's hard, yeah. Very hard. Someday. Someday. And uh, to have both uh, the top men in the, in the same team, is that a, a good thing or a bad thing, that's a rivalry? It, it has its advantages, but it also has disadvantages. Um, like there's a bit of an argument who's going to win today. I reckon it'll be me. And me and O'Connor is on the outside of the front row there, and beside him that man Brian Harty has got to beat. The second row on the inside is Ken Elliott, and outside him John McLaughlin in the white car number 12. On the next row it's Dominic Dillon and Mark Dunleavy, and these two battling out as well. They don't want to give anything. Our next row is Ali Lynch on the inside with Philip Shane, then we've Robbie Parks and Michael Hoban, and we're on board on the inside of the sixth row, and it's a go. And you can see that Finbar Murray having a good start, looking up that inside line. He's clear of them all, making up a couple of places into the breaking early. This is where it starts. Oh, Elliot has just caught the back of O'Connor, but I think with Lachlan and Harty have got through one or two out on the grass there. Elliot gets going again. My goodness me, 32 started this race. We've only lost one already. And and that's a little of a miracle. That there is Peter Donnelly going through, and also this is a rerun of the start out of HP, on board with Finbar Murray, into the left hand, a little nudge there from Ali Lynch as they head out into the country. But my goodness me, what can we do with it? There's a clatter gone through there, Peter Donnelly, Ali Lynch, Finbar Murray, Robbie Parks, and Shane Dalgetty, and it's still Ali Lynch on the inside there. Finbar Murray looking to see, can he do anything? The first part of this long, long left hand as they head out into the country. Right down into this very quick entry to a double like right hander. You get into the left hand side of the circuit, you've got to cut across, and then this big long straight we're looking at now. We can see that everybody, that's our onboard man, the green car, having a look at the outside line on lock and a wheel there Ali Lynch and he gets it wrong but he comes back from a touch of the wheel and he spins him out misses the nose by inches and we'll see it again that's one place I would not like to be with the other 20 odd V's coming up the hill from turn six and seven but he's okay lost the nose back in the grass but that will have put him back oh maybe 10 12 places meanwhile Back with Harty and McLaughlin. Can he do anything about this man? He's out front and that's our onboard man. His nose is still in good shape and look at the battle in the background as they get through there. And Peter Donnelly still in the middle of all these tussles. Down that straight he goes into HB, getting ever closer to Brian Harty. Very good on the brakes. Brian will know that uh, John McLaughlin is still there and very much in contention for to win this race out into the country they go, which was the quickest part of the circuit before they extended to this international one we're running today. Again, very late on the race, but Harty knows this circuit well. Up the hill, not a thing between them. And we're waiting for the battle that's coming through now. And just look what's on the way as they come through there, all the way out to the outside there. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten Vs 
all looking for that same piece of tarmac as they make the way. That's the recovering Ali Lynch, the man who lost his nose at the start of this lap. Meanwhile, back with the leaders, John McLaughlin treading in, clipped the curb fairly hard there, but didn't set himself off too much. There's a car length between them as they come up the hill. We're on board again with Finbar as they come down into this quick one. This is turn six. Will he get away with it this time? No, he just can't get the grunt up the hill. Whoa, a wee nudge and a touch as they head up there. Who would it be comes out of the S's? So we're on board. Finbar Murray on the brakes, turning in. Let's the car slide out. You can see that he's really working at the wheel. Front wheels working well. Back with our leader, Harty. Up the hill, into Dunlop once more. John McLaughlin, can he do anything about this man? A multi-champion as they head down the straight. He just turns it in nice and easy at turn six. Then out of seven, he's caught McLaughlin half. Really napping there as they come out. And look at this battle in the middle there, up the outside. Eugene Heary and number 21 there having a go. Pascal McEnroe and he gets away with it. He moves up. Here is the motor back down, so McEnroe, the second of these cars, as they make their way. Willie Callan holding on there, but a good move from McEnroe to bump Heary out as they head into HB once again. Two abreast, Heary on the inside, can he hold on to it? Number 21 we're looking for has been bumped down again and again lost those places. All the good work he did at the previous corner have been lost there as they head out into the country. And that is what Formula V racing is all about. Swapping places and learning your trade. Back down to this double apex. Ali there just making his way through the traffic. It's a long haul up, but he's made up about five, maybe seven places so far. So on a good run. Someone in the background there just losing out and number 60 there, that's John Downey and Billy Fanning just coming through the S's as well, making their way out into the 100 yard mark there as they just break really late. And that's Harty through the S's and we have news that there's oil out on the circuit there. Someone spilled some oil, maybe it was that man that was going slow, so this will make it treacherous for the lads in the back where they're really, oh dear, oh dear, the man that all the coming together with number 93, Ali Lynch there has finally succumbed to the big kitty litter. But look at the lead that Harty has as up the hill he comes and he's heading for yet another victory. I don't think this man can do anything about it. We're watching Harty and look at Ali Lynch, just distraught, possibly put it off from the oil, possibly did it all himself. Watch our man now down into turn seven, locks up, will he lose another place? Indeed he does. I think that is fourth place he's lost. He's back into fifth now as they head up to the S's. Oh, 29 of 49 there. That's Gilbert Clancy and Brian Kelly battling away as they come back up out of the dip of the old circuit, heading for the first long left-hander of the S's. Back on board with Finbar Murray. Will he get away with it this time? He does down the inside. He's got to make it stick. It's not long to go now. He hasn't got many laps left that he can miss out of place, and he does. The smoking one getting through there. We're back again with Willie Callan still fighting away there. And 47, John Downey, and this battle has been going on for all of the eight, nine laps so far, but hearty at the moment. Through that back of the paddocks, it's so, so smooth. He knows he has it in the bag, up to Dunlop, turns it in nice and easy, he's got 10, 15, maybe 20 car lengths, and we watch him take an easy victory once again here at Mondello Park, where we're going to go back and see how Finbar Murray's doing with our onboard, see it. will he make it to the line, can he stay in the top three or four? At the moment he's battling for fourth, fifth place, turning in, this is the second last one before Paddock Bend, he's got to come up here to the very sharp left-hander now, keep it all together, turns it over the curb, not too much, up the middle road, safeguard that spot, late on the brakes, but not too late, let it move out, we can tell you he's been hounded at the moment, but he's going to lose that place, he'll be out of the top five as they head for the line, but there's another battle on the way, and this one has been led by Willie Callahan as he comes up the hill there, and he's been chased by James Lyons, John Downey, Billy Fanning, and John Casey, and they are heading for the line. And what a result, though, for Harty, all the way through, and he's got it. So it's Harty from McLaughlin, from Mark Dunleavy, Dominic Dillon, and David Cassidy.
spark a good third place. Tell me about the spark though. It was a little bit higgly piggly for everyone. Yeah, it was a bit. I just saw Ender go up in the air and uh, I just tried to avoid the face. He took a tight as well. Like, took a bit of uh, took a bit of grass as well. And then when he came through, I found John in second place. John, a great second place, but at one stage you were on the gearbox to Brian. Yeah, I don't know, I think he's got a bit tired now. This old man must be fairly fit, I think, now. Brian, you put your fastest lap in, I think, around lap six or seven, so the oil, you're used to driving oil, aren't you? Yeah, well, it, it, I got a bit of a scare on turn two, I right, nearly lost so it. But they just position yourself across the aisle or whatever. How does that leave the championship now? And have you another round to go in two weeks' time? There's one round to go, but I can't be beaten as a half the championship. And as you can see from those points, Brian Hardy is the champion from Dominic Dillon, Endo Connor, Ken Elliott, and Mark Dunley. Mandelo Park echoes once again to the sound of big V8 engines as Formula 5000 returns to the park. The category was once considered something of a poor man's alternative to Formula 1. But today, the Formula 5000 men will be racing against some classic F1 cars and a couple of Formula 2 vehicles as well. David Kennedy's car for the day is a 1973 Lola, once raced by Grand Prix star Clay Regazzoni, now owned by Martin Moran. David, you're a maniac. What are you doing in <laughs> racing overalls after all these years? Well, there's no fool like an old fool, and hands up, I've done it. <laughs> Put my backside into one of these bloody things. They're uh, Formula 5000. It's, um, it's like a dinosaur, really, I suppose, in terms of race cars these days. It's, uh, it's a bit like a marshmallow, but then uh, that's what I'm used to. Um, I suppose a big cuddly dinosaur, really, but it's got teeth. It's got 500, nearly 500 horsepower and a lot of torque out of these things. And I remember as a, as a young fella coming here, watching the likes of Peter Geth and Mike Halewood just snake the cars down the straight. Fantastic cars, and they really are spectacular to drive. It's a, it's a march, a 738A from 1973 that we've uh, restored over the last six months. To the casual observer, it looks much more like a sort of Formula 2 proportion than Formula 3000. Yeah, you're quite right. In fact, it was built from a 722 uh, Formula 2 chassis by March. They built two. That was the development car. The other car became Ronnie Peterson's Formula 1. Um, so there is, in fact, only two identical cars. I'm from Dungarvan in County Waterford and uh, I've been living in England since the late 60s and uh, did a lot of motorcycle racing and now I'm getting old, too old to fall off motorcycles so we're on to four wheels and uh, enjoying it. And while Frank Lyons enjoys his Lola, wife Judy drives a McLaren. There's also an ex-Ronnie Peterson march in the race. And an ex-Emerson Fittipaldi McLaren M23. Formula 5000 was very popular at Mondello in the late 60s and early 70s. But the last championship race was held in 1974. So today, revives a lot of fond memories. Famous drivers who've raced here in Formula 5000 in the past include Peter Gethin, the 1971 Italian Grand Prix winner. And Lena Lombardi, who was the only woman to score a World Championship points finish. But as David Kennedy rolls up to pole position, he's looking around, it looks as if he's a problem with that gearbox. Is he stuck in gear? Second place man Nick Crosley just getting into line then the third place man will be Frank Lyon so all 5,000 cars and the way they're going a very slow takeoff there from Kennedy looks as if he was in second gear and it's Nick Crosley who jumps into the lead in that March 73A and right out there on the outside taking the quickest line is Frank Lyons in the other Lola. Then we have the Formula One car, the first of them, the March 711 of Malcolm Carter out into the country. It's nice to drive a car up a hill named after you so what we go Kennedy's rise but it's not his rise at the moment it is actually Nick Crosley's rise in that beautiful march with the big high air intake as they make their way out into the country 
Second of March there, the 711, then the next of the Formula One cars. And that little beauty there is a 19S Crosley. Meanwhile, Kennedy, this isn't the script he'd written earlier on. Was it a second gear or was it just him not getting it into first at the time? 74 there, the Black Lola of Martin Lorraine, the T330, which featured in the 73 European Championship. But this man up front, Nick Crosley, at the moment, he is doing everything right to keep this March 73A in front. And getting into that very tight one round the back of the circle. It's a dash now for that quickie. And what can Kennedy do? coming in on the brakes. He should know the circuit better than Nick Crosby, but in the background, Frank Lyons has got a move up here. Now, this is a good three-car race. Kennedy using that outside line, but Nick keeping the inside line of the march firmly closed. Has he got the grunt down the straight? No. And Brave Man just sitting in the middle of the road, Nick Crosby, as they head down to, again, a very tight hairpin for these very big cars, but beautifully done. Nick holds the inside line, lets the car slide out a little bit. He says, no way through there, David. Meanwhile, David got out a little wide and let that Frank Lyons move in on top of him. Now this will play into old Nick Crosley's hands if these two start to squabble because he can put out a lead down into that second gear. It's tight coming out of this but then you're planted on all 500 horsepower you want to suck you back out through the wing on the back. Lines. There's that little Crosley 19S, a beautiful little Formula 2 car and at the moment is sitting in sixth place so not that far off these big bangers as they say. Kennedy again has moved in on the back of Nick Crosley's march. Can he do anything about it? Oh, Frank Lyons putting the wheel on the dirt. Not a thing you want to do with a Formula 5000 car here at Mondello Park. Very easy to swap ends and again a wide line, a wide entry there. That's given Kennedy a chance to really climb with the gearbox and Frank Lyons should have been on board as well. But Kennedy really getting in on top. Will he out fumble him? What can he do? Going down there, he gets alongside. No wrong place putting the nose in but that's given them the exit speed now as they head up to the SEC he could cut in nice and tight and he's really on top and coming down into this long left hander David again using the outside line this will give him a quicker exit speed as they head out to the Parabolica Nick Crosley in the blue marsh diving across to the left to close the door but I think he's left it open at the inside and indeed he has he closing the door on the left to keep old Kennedy back and he leaves it open on the inside and he's through into the lead now Frank Lyons will be kicking himself that he sat back he should have kept really tight on to that battle but I don't think Nick Crosley has given up yet not much between the lap times all lapping in the 140s not bad for these old timers and especially for the old cars Kennedy out over the curves, Crosby out over the curves and Lyons having a good charge now as they come up the hill to Dunlop again, very hard on the brakes and the gearbox but all the time these two are leaning on each other, David Kennedy might be getting the odd car length, not too much, he's not exactly flying away, is he how can I have a look at the inside, he is indeed, Lyons must be the last of the late breakers for a 5000 really gets down there in deep and you can see just ahead of him now still David Kennedy that's the other march the ex Ronnie Peterson march locking up a wheel there of Malcolm Carr to the march 711 with the tea tray nose hence the big round flat spot on the front but uh, Kennedy back into the main arena again coming down to the S's this is where he takes that wide line turns it in a little bit late gets the power down, heads out into the country, doesn't get another care, but look at Lyons, Lyons is on a flyer, came through there just that little bit quicker, caught Kennedy napping, has he got a problem, reoccurring problem with that gearbox, unless you not, no, Kennedy coming back at him as they head down, but there's a yellow flag on the left, he shouldn't pass, he's just seen the flag now, he's got to back off, we're on the last lap, can he do anything about her, has Lyons caught him with his trousers down? Inside that black helmet, the little red hair will be going a little lampy. You can see it's all over the place. Huge understeer coming in. Maybe stuck in the gear and a little bit of oversteer on the way out. But look at the length. I don't think Lyons can catch it unless he blows it through the fast run at the back of the circle. Through here, through Lola. Don't hit the curb, Frank, up the hill. And in the background, David Kennedy is still trying hard. But I think Lyons has got the jump on him. You can see the hair flowing out the back as he powers it down the straight. So it's lines this time from David Kennedy, from Nick Crosley.